want to do a podcast. We make a darn good team. It always goes without a hitch. Let's head to Twitch and go start up the stream. Do you want to do a podcast? It's the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Let's start now. Hi everyone and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Come? Alright, I'll do my I'll do my own bit for myself. Oh, oh wait, no silence! <laughs> We're doing it. Get off the road. Hey Dave. Hey Boner. Why can't PC gamers use Uber? Not a long enough Ethernet lines. Good guess, but the, the problem is just that there's a lot of issues getting compatible drivers. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. I'm Boater. I'm Dave, man. I play PC games, and I know the pain. <laughs> <laughs> Although, it's, it's, it's been a while since I had driver issues, honestly. Like, it's not as big an issue as it was, like, five, ten years ago, but still... <laughs> Anytime you thought, I want to play Diablo on my new computer, and then you just thought to yourself. <laughs> it's more than anything, it's an uh, operating system issue, because I like playing old games. And wouldn't you know it, Freelancer just won't play on Windows 10, and my soul aches. <laughs> What's going on, Vladimir Spider? Welcome, welcome. Um, a lot of... Uh... A lot of stuff. Welcome here to the Nerd Glasses podcast. If you're if you're new, we got a lot of gaming news and just discussion topics and stuff. And uh, every week, le- every week, we like to start out with a Twitch ban, someone who ran afoul of Twitch's terms of service and is temporarily or permanently gone from the platform. Basically, we're playing with fire. And this week, uh, the uh, the guest of honor is uh, Annie, uh, who has been streaming since 2016. Uh, it's A-N-N-Y. Uh, has been streaming since 2016, switched to a VTuber format in 2021, um, has had a steadily growing user base, etc., um, but got a seven-day ban, her first ban ever from the platform. Reason being, it doesn't matter if it's a virtual character, nudity is still nudity. <sighs> How... First of all, the fact that it's spelled A N N I makes me immediately think of our son here in the studio, Jar Jar. Annie, Annie, okay. you can't show pornographic images on Twitch, Annie. Okay, first off, that would be with one N. Second, this is A N N Y as in Yankee. Hmm. But still, don't bring Jar Jar over here because then I will throw him. Don't you do it either. Our producer's uh, rolling to retrieve our son, um, our golden child. Yes. Okay. He's welcome at the producer's desk. He's welcome to sing at the producer's desk and play his song and his drum solos. Um, Not a lot of topics to cover there. We've covered it before when... um, uh, Who was it? A bigger VTuber that also ended up getting in trouble with nudity a couple of weeks ago. Um, Also just a tasteless stream in the first place. But, um, yeah, it's... The terms of service exist for everybody. The homeless stream. Yeah, yeah. 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 What a fuck. Who was that again? Um, But, uh, yeah, it still counts. If it's depicting uh, human nudity, whether it is uh, a live VTuber model or actually a person in the flesh or just, like, drawing it, uh, like, you probably can't illustrate nudity just drawing on Twitch. I wouldn't, personally. Uh... Part of that is because I can't draw, but still, still, that's what I've got for a ban uh, <laughs> to Miku. Yeah, it was something, something along those lines. But me, yeah, okay, that's what that's all, what it was Miku. All I could think about during that, during that, was uh, was Zap Brannigan going. My favorite part is the boobies. <laughs> yeah. So that's who was banned from Twitch sometime over the last seven days. She has a seven-day ban that might be reversed earlier. She kind of pointed and was like, but these other guys get away with it? Doesn't matter. What? Mm. Mm. Doesn't matter. How are people using that? Time to research. You make sure you keep that on a private tab, sir. 
The last thing we want is that, yeah, please, on your own machine, not the streaming machine. <laughs> Otherwise, we may as well just call it a night. So, that's over the last seven days. Dave, what's coming out in the next seven days? What do we have to look forward to? Well, have I got a harbinger of things coming out in the next seven days. I'm excited about these games. Can I actually start with one before we move sure. past you? Sure. So, this is actually a book that came out today called The Icarus Plot uh, by Timothy Zahn. It's a sort of sequel. It's in the same setting. You don't need to have re read the first one, but sort of a okay. sequel to uh, The Icarus Hunt, which I think came out in like 98 or 99. So it's been a while since he did anything in this setting. Um, but uh, if the name Timothy Zahn sounds familiar, he wrote a lot of really, really well-regarded Star Wars novels, uh, as well as some other stuff. I so. think we had a story about him at some point or another in the past. Maybe. But in the in the matter of Icarus, is it a reference to the Greek mythology Icarus? Is it a reference to a ship named Icarus? Or is it a reference to that Icarus character from Nintendo, perhaps? Mm, I'm going to go with option B. Ah. Um, I... It's been a little bit since I've read the book, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, one of the ships was called the uh, Icarus. Nice. Um, so, yeah, it, I really enjoyed the first book. It was a little heist-y, a little caper-y, um, and just some really good, tight plotting. Zahn is really good for the kind of, like, espionage and uh, twists that work super well. So it's, cool. it's a sci-fi. If that's your shtick, then the Icarus plot came out in hardcover today. Nice. So... Where were we? Ah, yes. There's That's enough of books. Give us the games. Thread and theme going through this. And uh, it'll all be presented to you live in HD on Nerd Vision. <laughs> Our first game coming out on the 8th for the Nintendo Switch, PC, the PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, and the Series X all at the same time. It's Ooh. Klonoa Fantasy Reverie Series. It's the 25th anniversary of our friend Klonoa and the fun little noises that they make and the little actions taken. And it's a remaster of 2001 Lunesta's Tale and 1997's Phantomville. Um, handwriting! And I uh, can say if you haven't played Klonoa and you like cute platformers, or to be honest, if you like games that... Uh, don't make you feel bad for not succeeding, but make you want to help that little main character. Okay. Klonoa is perfect, because when you don't succeed, you think to yourself, no, I got to do better for Klonoa. Like, okay. Um, I like that. It was a lot of fun on the original PlayStation and the PlayStation 2. Um, younger Dave did have uh, uh, the 1997 Klonoa game, uh, and then a bunch of demos of the second one, and played those to no end. Um, and... I really liked it, but uh, you know what? Just for giggle's sake, Steve, Steve, if we go to computer view, is that your computer? A streaming computer? Can you pull up the Klonoa official website for Fantasy Reverie series? It's funny, and it's a bit that's worth it. You can tell that this is a game originally designed by Bandai Namco, not necessarily for the U.S. market, um, because the the U.S. splash page, as it were, for that... Uh, Steve, would you mind pulling that up? I, I know he's pulling up the site as we speak. And He was not just, ready. <laughs> it has certain hallmarks of, of, of certain things going on that lets you know that ours was simply either a translation or a thought after the fact um, because commonly known in English as an afterthought uh, because well the featured page for each of the features is about between two and five words big old picture and then a singular sentence so sparse, you could drive a sonic plug straight through that Klonoa <laughs> website. Um, and, I, and I was looking at it thinking, like, I like Klonoa, and I have, like, certain internet threads with Klonoa. Uh -huh. and I, I had no information about this coming out. Okay. So, clearly, uh, our, our good friends over there uh, not really repping it at all. Um, are you, you pulling it up? 
So yeah, Steve, why don't you why don't you scroll down? So nice showing That's the Klonoa still adorable, characters. Yeah. Oh yeah, adorable characters. Um, you know, given that like nice little blurb showing what systems are coming out for, but then boom. One singular sentence. Two games in one. And I remember run and run and jump while using your oh my gosh, you're scrolling. Play Play these games in this compilation. Okay, second one. Anniversary remaster. Discover. Uh, we're watching on a delay over here still. <laughs> Iconic gameplay. Run and jump while using your wind thing. Yep. 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 Uh, and 60 FPS and uh, up to 4K resolution. Iconic gameplay. Can you show us that, Steve? Because... Uh, run and jump while using your wing thing to grab and throw your enemies. New accessibility. Adjust the difficulty levels to um, test your skill and enlist a friend in two-player co-op if you need help. Not too bad. I mean, it's it's it could be a little wordier, but at the same time, you know, it's 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 it really looks like but something that's like just, going on the art. Just yeah, like and it could be bigger text. That's more a web layout thing. And then just not like. First of all, there's only a standard edition, by the way. There isn't, like, 1,700 different ways to buy this game. Um, Look at you, Sanic! Yes, Sanic. Uh, thank you very much for the lurk. Love, Alec. So, Klonoa, going to be coming out. Really excited about it. Uh, and, and looking forward to it. Um, the next trailer is something exciting. Something revolutionary. Something we already talked about. I'm worried. But... Check that pulse, because, oh my god, this game, on the first, came, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, came to the Google Stadia. I am, I'm, hmm, so you say check the pulse, mm -hmm. a zombie wouldn't have a pulse, would it? Or would it have, like, a really slow, sluggish one? Uh, if it's a zombie, then I don't think it would have a pulse. But it depends on what... I need uh, to consult my zombie survival zombie. guide. Uh, what universe of zombies you have. Is it the Romero ones? Is it the Romero remakes? Is it the uh, 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 the Back for Blood kind? But and, unless a setting specifically contradicts it, I will default to the science set forth by Max Brooks in the zombie survival guide. Ah, so, this game was originally released in December of 2021, if you all remember. Yep. Uh, this one lauded and uh, had had a lot of things going on. It was very interesting. Um, but it struck me because it was specifically just came out for Stadia. Um, and I am very excited for it because it proves that our little engine that is probably not long for this world is getting current games <laughs> and I'm very excited for it the other irony is that this game Rest is in peace, yeah. one night wandering around a mall just like you can here at Insane Games uh, if you join us on any of our night programs you can come in the middle of the day and it'll be just about as occupied as this game is when you're in the gameplay here <laughs> it's not that bad <laughs> I will say I defy you to come here to Insane Games and watch our inventory pour quickly out the door yes. as our sales have been Right where we need. We it may to as be. well be an anchor store here. It's great. Um, <laughs> we are. We are one of the biggest stores in the small. If you think about it, <laughs> like we're one of the biggest active stores. We are over nine thousand square feet. Um, but it's true. In a way that you know, Google Stadia got swept. Uh, there's a game coming out on the twelfth that I'm very excited about. Let's go take over Bonton. Hell yes. <laughs> Hell yes. Um. Have a special operation to <laughs> this game coming out on the twelfth, titled Hellpoint. You're stranded on a derelict space station, the Irid Novo. I'm in. You're uh, uh, having to figure out how and why you became uh, uh, stranded on this station, um, and the big get is that the station is moving around a black hole. And so your proximity to the black hole affects the strength of these 
uh, uh, enemies that you face. Mm. This game was kickstarted in 2017. It is now on the 12th, coming out for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series nice. X. Nice. But to all of you no Stadia owners out there, you're pushing up your glasses. You're saying, but, well, but we had this game in 2021. And you would be right. That's right. The oh PS5 God. got scooped by the Stadia by a whole year. This oh game God. getting a little bit of a Souls-like tag uh, uh, for my, most of the things. Taco Bell, that's most of the people. That's true. That's true. And welcome, Taco Bell. Um, I I like the idea of it, and I was really stoked when I saw this game was coming out, and then saw that I was like, I was like, wait a minute, this one already came out, and I was like, oh, the Stadia got it before, <laughs> before the fact that it got it before anyone is mind boggling. Oh, unfortunately, it didn't get it before anybody. No, uh, no, no. I don't mean before everybody. I mean before any one thing. That someone got it after. I guess that someone got it after Stadia did. Oh, true. That's true. what I mean to say. And Thank you, lexical ambiguity. I'm um, I'm really looking forward to seeing where nowadays brings us with game releases and things like that, because we are truly in the era where if games were delayed because of the pandemic, they are either now finished and coming out, mm -hmm. or they are getting repolished and repackaged yeah. and then released in the coming year. Um, Welcome, Makai. Um, yeah. So before we get into like the newsier items. Dave, how was your weekend? It certainly was uh, a weekend. Um, I, of course, uh, have been jamming so much of my time into Monster Hunter and it ain't even funny. Um, and I am so close to being level enough to play the DLC. So close. You can do it, I believe, Zinnia. Uh, I'm very excited because tomorrow on the weekend, Wednesday, I'll be playing Monster Hunter and hopefully we'll be pushing through to the quest ends to get to where I will purchase the DLC later and play on that. Um, I'm stoked about it because uh, in realizing what they did was the the highest level quests are uh, not single player required. They are single player optional. Okay. So you can open it up to the internet and have other people join your quests and help you fight the monsters or join friends. Or you can do these online quests alone without having to have people online help. Um, and I was excited about that. And I'm, I'm hopefully going to, uh, as a horn hunter, uh, get some help with that uh, tomorrow on the weekend, Wednesday, to get to the seven star quests. Hopefully get some of my armor maxed out and my weapons maxed out. Of course, OV Watch. Um, I accidentally opened it, and then four and a half hours later, I closed it and went ho and, and went on my way. Um, You're not not sure what happened in the middle there. Just it was it oh. was eight o'clock, and then it was twelve o'clock, <laughs> and it was the best. Having such a good time with it. Um, still no Overwatch two beta. Still no Overwatch two beta. Uh, 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 as a as a plebeian console owner. Hang on, we'll do the uh, the gimmick of I'm gonna check my email to see Blizzard, if Blizzard, Blizzard Blizzard can we get a can we get a if Blizzard beta wants for this a, for this gentleman over here for our a, star uh star one of the star hosts of the Nerglesses podcast if we can get some uh, some Blizzard representation up in here uh, Nintendo trying to get me to buy uh, a game with offering a sale on it and uh, nope no Activision uh, no email from Activision Blizzard about Overwatch two beta very um, disappointing I thought they were they were a company that paid attention. Um, what would have given me that idea? <laughs> I'm very excited to hear that uh, uh, Nightwing in our community has just gotten his code, and uh, Love Alec uh, himself got it as well. That's awesome. Uh, super stoked that folks are going to get to play it, uh, get some experience in it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and then I watched... I've been watching a lot of Geek for All. That's that's been kind of my my speed at at, uh, at 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 the moment. I haven't really nice. been watching anything other than baseball games and and the San Francisco Giants. Uh, really need to start winning some of these <laughs> games, maybe. Um, you know, as a friendly but... suggestion. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, I how about really... you, Boater? What are you watching? What are you playing? What are you doing? What are you buying? What are you selling? <laughs> 
I I really got nothing. I well, um, I started playing a little bit of Fireworks Mania last night. Uh, which is just basically here's an empty like town or, or cityscape or whatever. Set up fireworks, firecrackers, whatever, and then set them off. And it's fun. It's fun to uh set one off right next to the fireworks store. It's fun for my frame rate to tank to two frames a second. Uh, and it'll be fun <laughs> to use to benchmark when I get a new graphics card and CPU. <laughs> nice. Uh, aside from that, really nothing uh i finished reading the shattered skies by john birmingham uh which i enjoyed sequel to the cruel stars uh it was kind of a long time coming for a sequel but enjoyed it um and currently reading the mcmurdo rift by uh one of my friends uh under the pen name bradley lejeune um so i'm enjoying that but yeah as far as reading watching nothing really new got nice. a lot of reading done over the weekend because i was i was out of town so Good. got some reading done got some writing done it was it was uh, it was very telling because I I like the Sunday lineup I have, uh, which is I wake up and Lieutenant Bulldog's already streaming, then I start, then brunch with Boater starts at mm-hmm. uh, Twitch.tv slash Boaterbug, um, and then after that, uh, Anti Klaus Prime, uh, Kelly Insanity, and Kerps usually start and intermittently one yeah. of the three of them begins and the rest of them, um, and I've been having a great time with that, um, but. <laughs> And it's like, up. Oh, Boater's out of town because well, there's no brunch with Boater, and I didn't even try to do it on my phone this time. You were out, and then a bunch of other people were out. So Lieutenant Bulldog <laughs> streamed, then I streamed, and then the two of us met each other. We were like, we were like, is everyone okay? Did people die? <laughs> and they were both like, oh yeah, that's right. It's the third of July. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's the eve of the fourth. I it's fourth uh, eve. I put up just a butt ton of vods on the on, up in the store on Sunday. There you go. Uh, cuz there, there wasn't the usual live streams for me to have up and be like, "Ee." Mm-hmm. So, considered Boater, streaming when I got home yesterday, but man. How much would you pay to get a favorite game franchise of yours back into the 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 purview of one of the publishing companies? Um, I don't have enough money that I would consider to be enough for me to be like, well, I'm trying to think what I would even do that with, with a company that actually still has the rights to it. Cause all the old games that I would want to do that with, nobody knows who has the rights anymore. That's part of why they aren't making them. Um, oh, so you just really need to like, even hypothetically open a wall and just go like, <whistles> and see what shakes out of the woodwork. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like if I had... I know where this is going, but I'd say if I had, you know, three million to just kind of drop on the table, then maybe, you know, if if I if I was at the point where I wasn't too worried about money, I'd be like, yeah, three million is enough to get it discussed, uh, you know, any more than that. And it's like, all right, I'm actually funding the development here. And it's especially actually with games that who knows who owns them. It's all right, guys, we're making a sequel. And if a rights holder comes out of the woodwork, we're changing just enough that we can make it an independent thing. And as like a spiritual sequel instead, <laughs> color swap it, take any word and inverse the word. And now we're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or it's like, oh, you own the rights. Do you want to officially sanction the sequel? <laughs> Do you want your rights to, to be worth to something? To descend free space? Free space three. It's happening. <laughs> That's the game I would fund. Uh, anyway, uh, Dude Icarus, one dollar for the Burnout Three remake. If anyone in chat has, uh, oh, an I'd, that I'd, I'd pitch well. in a dollar for a Burnout Three remake. Hell yeah, I'd pitch in three. Taco Phil, <laughs> that's how City Skylines works. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, one one person whose name isn't really out there in the internet, um, in Japan, spent five million yen. That's forty thousand U.S. dollars. On Nintendo stock recently wow. to be able to show up to the annual stockholders meeting where, as a majority stockholder uh, uh, with a large stake in the company, you get to ask questions of the executives. I'm going to say something really quick. For some reason, I thought that the comma was moved over a little more, and I thought it was $40 million, which is why I was fine saying $3 million, which... I w- to, for the record, I wouldn't do, but 40,000? I mean, 40, yeah. 40, yeah, that's a reasonable yeah. amount just and to... Just for a question. Not yep. to not to pu- publish the game, do those things. Um, 
Th- although three million, that's a lot more reasonable. Three I mean, million nowadays, you'd probably be able to open your own publishing company and uh, your own game studio, grab some of the many many people that are are exodusing these large companies. About three million, but uh, it's enough to get like a really good proof of concept going to try to get the rest, uh, you know, to, to pitch. You really could well. always go to our uh, our our ham headed little brothers at Epic Games if you had three million dollars worth into a tech demo, and they would certainly provide you the rest of it. Yeah, uh, as long as it was exclusively <laughs> on the Epic Store. <laughs> Until they sue me for using the engine wrong. <laughs> hey, Silicon Knights! <laughs> what engine are you using? Not yours. Uh, no, yours, but we had a lot of problems with it, so uh, we had to basically rebuild an engine out of it, and now we're not going to pay the licensing fees. So our good friend... Silicon Knights. ...spent 5 million yen, because he says that he's a gaming fanatic, but he really just wants to know, when are we getting more F-Zero? <laughs> and all I can picture is just Jerry Seinfeld, for some reason. Just, be, just standing up and just being like, What's the deal with F-Zero? When are we getting more? And I, the Nintendo executives were, were very uh, open and honest with it, and they said they hadn't really considered that IP, but it is not uh, out of the realm of possibility within this console's lifetime, but it's not really in the purview of projects they're working on right now. I, ju- I just, um, like, F-Zero or whatever, but yeah, that the, the plan is not to tweet... You know, whatever. Not, you know, doing one of those, hey, how many retweets before you tell me how the next F-Zero game is going? No. To buy stock to show up to a shareholders meeting where you can ask the board or whatever. That is inventive, um, bold, and I like it. I respect it. I respect it immensely, and I really hope this person... Uh, uh, for all, actually, for all of our sakes, we get another F Zero game because um, now, if someone could just drop uh, forty grand to go to a shareholders meeting and be like, "Hey, can you stop being a dick to YouTubers that uh, are really big fans of yours just because they use a little bit of your soundtrack?" You know what you're gonna get promptly. No. Escorted out is like, what I'm gonna get. You will, you, actually, you know what you're gonna get? They're just gonna stand up and be like, "DMCA that man." <laughs> They're just gonna slap tape over your mouth and carry you yeah, out of the meeting. Yeah, no. Halfway through the question, it just like, <laughs> "What about what about the people on YouTube?" And we don't like the internet here. <laughs> God, <laughs> give them a T-shirt and send them out. <laughs> um. So we mentioned a couple games coming out for Stadia. Yeah. Um, and Stadia is a console that people kind of had to question, is it going to come out? How far is it going to go? Whatever. Similar to Ouya, we've compared. Um, well, apparently, there is another new console that has just been announced. <gasps> really? It is so freaking stupid, I didn't even write stuff down about it. But give me just one moment to get the name of it. New console. A new console that is just such a stupid flipping idea. I can't even be bothered to like find the actual name of it. It's a it's a web3 enabled console aka crypto and NFTs and d- there's a render of the thing with what looks like a DualShock 4 controller that's, you know, just anonymized enough. Um, there's like a mock-up of what its store page might look like. The <gasps> logo looks vaguely like the Game Cube logo. The Polium One. Basically, like they came up with a timeline of like idea, conceptual, and we're here, and it's still a couple years away from coming out. Um, it so it's Bitcoin operated. Well, it it's meant to run all these games that are play to earn because it's totally a growing market for that kind of thing. Sarcasm. Well, you know what, Boater? Fortunately and helpfully, we have. Uh, uh, we were able to time travel, Steve, to the future, to see the future of this. Uh, and here's a good representation of what's going to be happening to it right here in the Nerd Vision. Um, boom! This is what that console is going to look like uh, very soon. It'll be great. I'm oh, so excited. I think that that gives it a lot of credit because that implies that the console is going to come out and be awful. And I don't think it's going to get that far. I'm I think it's just going to be vaporware and never, never happen. I was. See, I know that came out, but that was a good idea, even if it was ahead of its time. The Polium One is a stupid idea 
that actual game developers are not interested in. Actual hardware developers are not interested in. But people who want to scam people out of their money are very interested in. Why hardware when you can... I mean, it's basically just going to be like an Android-enabled thing, I guess, but... Feel bad for Landon Castle if that sponsorship ends for him. Um, actually, yeah, I didn't really go into my Web3 roundup, and we'll use this to uh, kind of go into that, because Steve sent us around uh, something for the Web3 roundup as well. But uh, yeah, the Polium 1, it's a stupid idea that was announced, and it's just has all the same hallmarks as any other coin drop, NFT drop, anything like that. So can't wait um, to see it at for four dollars at five below in ten years. Honestly, the uh I have more faith in the Intellivision Amica coming out, and that says something. Oh God! Ah, oh, you said it. <laughs> um, Another one for the Web3 Roundup. This is a topic, actually, that Steve sent to us. Voyager Digital, which is a large digital asset brokerage. They deal with crypto trades, but also, like, um, they have clients that do crypto trades and they, you know, lend out cash, whatever. They suspended all trades, including deposits and withdrawals. One of its main clients, Three Arrows Capital, defaulted on a loan for $670 million. That's a lot of shares in Nintendo to ask about F04. That's that's a that's a big ass loan. Holy crap. Well, it's like, <laughs> oh, this is this is to backstake in in crypto. Yeah, crypto's only going up. So sure, you can have that loan. Uh-oh. Um wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't buy a house. But Crypt Douche Bros can get a six hundred million dollar loan for Feffel? Come on! Thank you very much for the follow, Vladimir Spider. We're glad you're enjoying the show so far. Um, yeah, uh, the company had to suspend activity to, quote, explore strategic alternatives with various interested parties. <laughs> Shovel all the tax paperwork into the fire pit. That's yeah, it's doing. like any any company... <laughs> that is investing in crypto or investing in companies that trade in crypto is just absolutely feeling it right now. And I, I'm not sorry. I am not sorry. I'm sure a lot of people work for that company and for 3AC and everything like that. But just like, I'm not sorry. You, you either knew what you were getting into or you were stupid enough to fall for it. Chances are, though, if you're working for a crypto company, you knew what you were getting into. I <laughs> you just you just can't with this crap. You just can't. Um They're you know, on the entry list for this weekend's cup race show, so we'll have to see. Yeah, um Dude Icarus, uh you mentioned uh a, a sponsor like Voyager Digital sponsors one of the racers or uh, one racer and one team. One racer and one team. So uh <laughs> That sponsorship is still in effect. I think they've already spent the money on whatever until there's a, a uh, announcement otherwise. But it's just early this year. Again, just all of the crypto ads that were all over the Super Bowl. Staples Center being renamed to the Crypto.com Arena. Just all of this stuff. And I'm just so delightfully happy to see it all crash. And I said something like that to my uh, sister-in-law this weekend. And, and she was like... Yeah, no, I lost uh, I lost X money on that. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, but also. And she's like, yeah, I, I get it. It's fine. <laughs> uh, you know who else is going to lose a lot of a lot of money they don't have? Uh, uh, Rafe Wolf gave us this story that is on a reputable oh, news source. God, I but, saw uh, this. As Love Alec pointed out, it reads like an Onion article. Because uh, the title of the article says everything you need to know about it. Radio Shack would like to clarify that its Twitter account wasn't hacked. It just sells crypto now. Radio Shack, Twitter, crypto. These are terms that should not exist in the same literary work, let alone sentence. And yet, here we are. And by well, the I way, Twitter those, and crypto go those together, tweets... Radio Shack? Those tweets, by the way, were full of vulgarities. 
uh, yeah, they they went they went hard on the try to get people's attention on them. Um, because the idea of no um, so they just tweeted like a bunch of fucking morons. Um, and then, but then when everyone was like, oh, Radio Shack got hacked and they had to go up and be like, oh, no, we sell crypto now. Like, you still exist. Yeah. It's, it's like the, the photo that was going around on social media of like, yeah, here's uh, some DVDs of Morbius uh, up for rent at the last blockbuster. <laughs> they had 14 copies, if, if the if the articles are to be remembered, and yes. six of them were were rented. Were rented out, yeah. Um, people were people like, were at home. That is th- blockbuster. The last blockbuster does nostalgia well. <laughs> Radio Shack takes what little is there and just goes. You know, um, it's been really bad seeing uh, uh, so many stupid people saying things on the internet, and I just can't. Yeah, how dumb are these big companies? Well, well, St- it's in in that vein, and in, in the uh, no publicity, you know, any publicity. Sorry, bad publicity is publicity, or whatever the phrase. Um, and in the vein of stupid stuff on Twitter, I got another story. Oh no! If I may. Oh God. Um, Dave, are you aware of the mean format of there are ten but or there are seven but? In reference to math. Well, uh, well, you know, as someone like, oh, hey, there are ten, or like, oh, you know, what would sometimes be done with the meme is like, oh, uh, there are seven, but their favorite Star Wars character is Jar Jar Binks. Oh, maybe that's like a three or something, you know, or like there. A- for what? like att- attractiveness, like attractiveness scale. Oh, all right, I'm in. Okay, what? Yes. Why? First of all, why would you use this system? But okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, like it was a, it was a meme format. So where's like this going. So, to? so it's like oh well, there are ten, but and then he says something negative, and it's like oh, so you would you would stay away from that one, even though visually there are ten, whatever. <sighs> a company decided to make the tweet: there are ten, but they only like playing single player games. Folks, what video game company do you think could really get in trouble for that one? Uh, mm, who would be dumb enough to say something like that? That ever, all of them would be dumb enough to say something That's like true. that. That's true. But which one is particularly well known for not being liked by players of single player games? Could it be our good friends at Electronic Arts? It they wouldn't dare put their head Back in that can uh, of worms. They did. They did so hard. There are 10, but they only like playing single-player games. Tweeted EA a couple of days ago. And it's just like... And, it, and like the response to that was immediate. Like People that are like, oh, I am currently developing Star Wars Jedi Survivor to be published by EA. A single-player only game. Or, oh, I was developing... X, a single-player only game that EA canceled in 2017, laying off hundreds of workers. Like, not to mention, like not not just the people playing them, but um, you know the the uh, double check and quote tweets here because that's where some of the fun stuff really comes in. Where's my Galactic Conquest in my battle? Uh, 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 my Star Wars games, bro. Where are they? Okay. Yeah. You have ship mechanics that work really well and are very fun. You have it. Where is it? <laughs> I want it. Understandable that you are unfamiliar with the concept of a 10, says, <laughs> said someone in response to EA. Ha! Um, you know, says the company's most profitable franchises are Sims, Star Wars, Jedi, Mass Effect, and Dragon Age. Um, you know, uh, people at Bioware talking about how. Um, thank you, Taco Pill. The phrase is "no such thing as bad publicity." I don't know why the actual wording got away from me, but yeah, like people lamenting that uh, Bioware was forced to develop Anthem, which was basically passed on from EA, make us something to compete with Destiny, and like Bioware put their stamp all over Anthem. Don't get me wrong, but EA did something fierce. Bioware would have just as well gone on to. Um, work on Mass Effect Andromeda earlier and better without having teams taken away from Anthem, mm. uh, and so on and so forth. 
Do you mean they would have had one passable game instead of two shite ones? <sighs> what was this? Maybe Dan can pay $3 million for the assets. <laughs> Dan might like $3 million for the assets. He might. Yeah, so um, EA did a dumb. Um, and they, they tried to walk it back later. It's like, oh, we're kidding. That actually makes you an 11. And it's like... Taking it at face value, they're 10, but they like single-player games. Oh, so, like, are you making a metaphor that, like, they're not dating? They're not in the dating pool right now? They're just, like, is this a reference for, like, Arrow, Ace, whatever? Uh, no. EA, you did a dumb. Uh, Sustina also brought this uh, uh, to the Nerd Glasses Topics uh, thread, and uh, all I could respond to it was someone had taken a a suited person with the EA logo plastered over their face that just goes, we've got to have money. And it's like, wow, just yeah. awful. Oh my Very God, tone roommates. deaf on their part. Uh, yeah. And a really bad time for, uh, for, for, for jokes about things like that. Just a super shite time for you to be sticking your face in that EA. Mm -hmm. Um, and as someone who basically only plays single player games. Anyway. Uh you know what did stink? To be clear, that was for EA, not you wonderful viewers. Is still you. getting uh, uh some press. Remember remember that comic book first person shooter thirteen? That was a lot of yes. fun and really good. Yes. Remember the remake of it that was so bad? The yes. game literally yes. got pulled from shelves before I could get a physical copy. Yes. Um, they announced on the Steam page of the game, which is the only place that they can get the presser <laughs> out there, um, that the French studio uh, uh, Tower Fair would be uh, taking the reins on a re-remaster of 13, and it's going to be slated for a September comeback. If you purchased the game, good news, you're just going to get a patch, and it's going to be the new game over the very clearly not working shite version. Is, of the, is the old shite version still going to be available to play? No. Wow. That's nope. interesting for... For, like, a video game archival standpoint. I mean, it is coming out as an update, so you can just probably roll it back. Fair. Um, to that. But, like, but especially you... with digital distribution, it's that's what it is. And that's... I mean... And nothing of value was lost. But, um, again, you can still go and get the original 13 from 2003? I think so. Ish. Um, on Steam. You can still get that version. I still planned on doing that for a Let's Play at some point. but It's $10 and it's really good. Is it that much? I thought it was 5 It's us It's on sale perpetually, but, okay. but uh, it's it's listed at nine ninety nine because it deserves to be nine ninety nine. Um, whereas the... It's a fantastic game. The only thing is, it's not going to autosave for you. Don't rely on the autosave. I made that mistake about 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> um... But yeah, I was really excited when that came across my uh, my yeah. dashboard, and so, like, I will get my hands on a copy of this thing. I will. For whatever system. I believe in you, Dave. Akai also agrees. Excellent game. Um, we, still, we still need to finish our dual play pray, uh, pray playthrough that we're doing on Boater yes. Play Something. Then yes. we can do a dual 13 playthrough. Oh, God. <laughs> Dave, you need to come over to my house and we need to record more videos. It has literally been two and a half years. The uh, <laughs> the summer is the worst time for me to for any free time at all. Um, but uh, but soon the fall will come and days off will be plentiful. And day, by days off, I mean one job. Uh, Taco Bell, ten dollars too expensive. Nine ninety nine. I'm listening. If I can book a weekend ahead of time, I would love to. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about the social calendar after the show. I just I just book him for 48 hours straight, Friday night through Sunday night. And it's like, you're staying at my house. We're recording some videos. We're having a good time. You're wrong. It's a lot of fun. Um, uh, as somebody that has been a constant collaborator at YouTube.com slash um, Thank but you for plugging me so much. <laughs> I appreciate it's easy. it. Um, 
Make sure you're watching this this guy over at twitch.tv slash DIM314. It's um, fantastic. Speaking of things that are fantastic, it's always nice when things you like do well. So we talk about... Um, we talked about Sunbreak coming out as DLC expansion. Yep. And since it came out on the 30th, it is now the fifth. Over 2 million copies of uh, uh, Sun Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak have been sold, which also then raises in part the total of Monster Hunter Rise, which yep. has been out now on Switch for about a year and a half, two years, yep. and on PC for a calendar year, to 10 million copies sold. <laughs> Um, it's not necessarily competing with the big boys out there, but it is competing with previous Monster Hunter releases and things like that. And it is following expected release windows and things like that, especially because Sunbreak is not a starting point for a release. You have to start from the beginning, um, or have a character that's very high leveled, and then you can roll in there and defeat some really cool looking monsters. And I cannot wait well, it's like you said that, like, you know, you've been playing the heck out of it, but still haven't actually gotten to any of the DLC stuff. So it doesn't help that in the era of of streaming video games, which I do a lot, because if I am going to play, I'm usually playing on stream because, yeah, uh, me and my friends have a lot of fun. We all we all agree, like get along. We all gel very well and it all fits very well for the platform. Um, so it's way of opening up instead of it being a two player game, it's now a two player game with a room of commentary. Yeah. Um, Pretty but, soon, you know, when we were in the old studio, we kind of we had a discussion of when do you decide to play something on your own? When do you decide to play it for an audience? Yes. And I feel like we should revisit that discussion sometime soon. We'll see if we can get anyone else in on that discussion. I think that'd be really fun to have like kind of a brain trust of people. Let's yeah, let's make that a community question yep. and see if we can get people to either make written answers or video answers as as folks have had in the past. Um yeah, we'll we'll put it up. Uh, we'll we'll try to put it up sometime this week and give people a month to get in responses. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that'd be a fun thing to talk about. Hell yes, love it. Um, another thing that I love, uh, weirdly, is the game Lollipop Chainsaw. I played it on my YouTube channel. Oh. Um, and I will be honest. One of the reasons that I was really excited to play it is because the main character is voiced by Tara Strong using the exact same voice as Twilight Sparkle. I was a brony at the time. Um, and it's it's a very M-rated game, so it was weird like that. Um, not that kind of brony. Anyway, um, I really had fun with the game. It was a properly messed up experience. Um, there is one whole chapter where, like, Character is just like tripping because it's like this kind of psychedelic hippie theme, whatever. And I lost all the footage from that recording, and that was somehow oh no thematically appropriate. I went through and recorded occasional clips while I just narrated what happened over the course of what would have been four episodes. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed the game. Um, gameplay, I don't really remember. I think it was passable. It was fine. The soundtrack was amazing. Uh, partially. You know, I had a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe, which considering it had either the same producer as Guardians of the Galaxy or like his brother, one of the gun brothers. I really <laughs> one of those damn guns. One, one of one of them. I don't know. Um, I really enjoyed the game. And so they announced today, I think, um, that they are planning on remaking not I don't think remastering remaking Lollipop Chainsaw. And that's really interesting to me. Like I the actual levels themselves I think were pretty forgettable. Some of the like the boss fights were pretty cool, were pretty fun. But um like going for a full remake kind of thing. Uh James Gunn did write it. Okay. Um Yeah, um I mean uh when we were talking about it before, you you jokingly said, Oh the porn game, haha and it's like well, I mean, it's it's M-rated, but the biggest problem I had on YouTube was um, songs like Cherry Bomb, uh, Lollipop, obviously. You know, stuff like that that's in the soundtrack is yeah. fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to a remake of that. They just basically just announced it today. Um, I think they said sometime next year, but I didn't get the chance to look at it too closely. I just kind of saw, saw it, and I was like, ooh, yay. It's, it's, it's weird. Like, it's such a, a kind of, like... Not exactly forgettable, but one of those games that you're not going to keep playing. You sit there, you consume it, you play through it, and you're like, 
well, that was delightful. Now what? And you move on. So I'm, I'm a little surprised how much I'm like, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It'll be interesting. Um, Demon Dragon sigh, but still no Shadow Hearts remake or remaster. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm, I, I tried playing Shadow Hearts. A, I think it was, yeah, yeah, um, a bit, and it just, it didn't grab me. So that's something where, like, a remake would have a lot more of a chance of really uh, picking up well. Um, it, it deserves it. Oh my god, can I please... I was gonna drop the link to my Lollipop Chainsaw playthrough, and it's just it's being a pain. Uh, okay. And you can make sure to drop your links in Discord down below for Insane Games TV. Make your voice heard on for and about all the programs here on the network. If you haven't yet, hit that follow button, ring that bell, do all that stuff. Woogity woogity, get your free custom shout-out. <laughs> um... You know who's uh, who's definitely getting a shout out uh, was a lot of folks put some effort and made a mod for yeah. uh, uh, called Fallout London. It was a Fallout Four. It's basically a DLC expansion size of the Pit or other such things, but it's London uh, uh, in the era. Well, our uh, our our uh, 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 folks at Bethesda took notice of this and offered the uh, uh, lead tech designer and the project manager of Fallout London jobs at Bethesda. Uh, one was going to be working uh, uh, within Fallout 4 and things like that, and the other was offered a job on Fallout 76 to try to help with that and get mm -hmm. things turned around. Um, and unfortunately, but unfortunately, one of them did decide to work for Bethesda and one of them decided not to work on Fallout 76, but cited that they wanted to stay on, uh, Fallout London, uh, and work on it yeah. till it's, till it's time had run out. Um, but it was, it was kind of cool to see. And I like when game companies, take notice yeah. of user made content so much that they either, you know, give give funding in some way or realize talent and bring it on to themselves. Yeah, exactly. Well it's it's like how back in the day um Valve legitimized Counter Strike, which was originally just a mod for Half Life, and ended up selling it in retail right alongside the game. Ditto for Team Fortress Classic. Um, so it's like, I don't think that Fallout London is necessarily going to be that same level of thing where it's going to be considered an official mod, but it's very much a, yeah, that's fine. Which is, you know, especially in contrast to Nintendo mentioned earlier in the stream, really refreshing to see. It's, it's, and I feel like Bethesda was like that before, but it, it's, it's nice that even post, uh, Zenimax buyout by, uh, Xbox, excuse me, Xbox, that they're, they've still... They've still got that chill. Yeah. It's it's cool to see, especially a company that continues to make uh, uh, re-hikes and remasters, bless you. Um, and, Thank you. Sorry. And then, like, sells, you know, the, the recent Skyrim re-re-re-re-re-re-re-re-release uh, uh, oh. was saying, like, hey, we have these mods in the console game and this and that and the other. It's like, it's good that they've done better especially after all the controversy with those ones uh, and things that went on with that of them acknowledging like, yeah, we have a really active modding community and they do really good stuff. Yeah. Um, so fantastic wor <laughs> work to both of you guys. I have their names down, but they, their names are inconsequential to, to, to story and, and they're yeah. not linked to anything, but um, just Let know Fallout London. If you're a fan of Fallout, it's more content and it's, it's a deeper, uh, a fan made uh, part to build into the story of of the Fallout universe. Um, yeah, and again, I just really like when games um, make it so easy for modders that like um, American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator. The way that they work is that there's the base game, and then if you have uh, and then DLC can add onto it. But like any trucks outside of the main game are technically mods, like they're mods that you enable in their in game. Mm mod library whatever and of course there's steam workshop and everything like that that's also also ways to get that and it's just really um yeah really really cool when they when um they have the integration and they make it so easy and they're so supportive of a modding community always feels good 
Um, As a PC gamer, it makes it worth all the driver hassles. Mm. Bam. Um, Speaking of hassles, no one likes it when your favorite old game or favorite old console gets unplugged and put offline. But Ubisoft did announce as of the 1st of September, there are about 10 games that they are going to be taking offline uh, to be able to, well, put resources off of mm-hmm. these online servers that are used, but not as used in their heyday. Yeah, I, um, I heard closer to 15 multiplayer games that they're going to be... Uh, they're all multiplayer games, right, that they're shutting down servers for? Or is this something where, like... So they there, there are some games that are exclusively multiplayer and some of them that have single player. Now that I'm looking at this list okay. of now 15. Yeah. Um, because uh, sometimes, like, there's single-player games that have, like, multiplayer, quote, content, or, like, authenticate with servers. Yeah. The worst is when there's a single-player game that still needs to authenticate with a server to log in, and then the server isn't there anymore. Looking at you, Doom 64 on the Switch. Mm. Um, but the but titles, anyway. if you are a fan of these titles, just know that these servers, as of September 1st, will be shut down. Uh, if they do have... A uh, single player, they will still be available uh, uh, for single player offline mm-hmm. campaign. But uh, Anno 2070, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Liberation HD, and Assassin's Creed Revelations. I know what you're thinking. Hey, I just bought a remaster version of this for the Xbox Series X or for the PlayStation 5. Remasters those servers are, still be fine. are unaffected. Yeah, uh, so, so it's if you're still playing the original like Xbox 360 or PS3 versions of those. I noticed that the cutoff was, all right, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, still good. <laughs> Uh, Driver, San Francisco, fun game. Uh, Far Cry 3. Ghost wow, Recon. we got a thumbs down for Driver San Francisco over there. Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands. Rayman Legends, which will make that game wholly unplayable, by the way. Uh, Silent Hunter 5. Space Junkies. Splinter Cell Blacklist. And depressing for me, but for nobody else because no one else played this game, uh, uh, was Zombie U. What? <laughs> it was uh it was a Wii U zombie Aww. game where you used the tablet as your your character's sight and you, so you had to like use the tablet to look oh, around at what was going on. So that the zombies would come awful. up behind you. It was so fun. It was so fun in college we would get incredibly The Wii U will rise again, Akai. Well, the Wii U will rise again, Steve. Um but yeah, Uh, Those servers will be shutting down. The single-player games will be unaffected, um, but uh, those ones will be shutting down. Uh, Our friends, though, at Ubisoft Mains, however, after this was released, said uh, that they were going to be switching to putting... um, And for Pete's sake, I I didn't write (laughs) the title of the game down. Uh, That's in here somewhere. Uh, yep. Anno 2070. Uh, that Ubisoft mains is going to be taking the servers in house uh, and changing how they're operated. Obviously, because okay. they're not going to be on the Ubisoft big boy servers. But uh, they did say that they are going to try. So that's that's for... the developers rather th- are going to take it since Ubisoft the publisher isn't. That's yes. cool. That's cool. They... Yeah, because I remember. Like, it was an underrated game, but I feel like it was still one that uh, was well-received uh, as far as, like, reviews and such go. Yeah, people had fun with it, but... It, and that's cool that, that just the devs still have so much faith in it that they're like, yeah, we'll run those servers. Or they have so little faith in it that they're like, nobody's going to be on these things. This is going to be, like, nothing for us to do. <laughs> I think also because they are a Ubisoft-owned... Uh, 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 company, I think it is one of those ways of like, how can we get the money's attention? Oh yeah, take on a project that they didn't want anymore, and if we turn it around and make it any bit successful or any bit profitable, mm. you know, certainly will be them uh, them being able to. Driver San Francisco deserves better. Sister Chris. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, what do we got? We got time for about one more before we need to start getting ready for for Citadel, which will actually happen tonight. 
So those, what are you playing on the Citadel? Uh, I'm going to be playing Split Second, uh, which is a combat racer uh, published by Disney Interactive, developed by, I think, BlackRock Studio. Um, really fun, kind of set up to be like a, uh, a TV show kind of thing. And rather than most combat racers where you fire weapons, and this you're triggering the environment to uh, damage your, the, your rivals. So I'm excited for it. I played it a bunch before, but we're going to be starting a new campaign in the game that deserves better too says Jude Icarus giving an, a tacit endorsement of that game um, he was the one that suggested I play it even if I don't I think he was being at least somewhat facetious at the time <laughs> then I said I'm gonna do it and he was like heck yeah Steve's our, our producer here like other racer games um, so uh, for those of you that broadcast on Twitch some changes are coming up. They did have a little PSA about them. They did stream about it, and they did mm -hmm. answer a lot of questions in chat live, which was a lot of fun. But here's some spark notes. Um, right now, down below, our, our title here on Twitch, by the way, hit that follow button, ring that bell, so you get notified every time we go live, um, is the tag English. You can also add tags of what country you orient from, or you're originating from, mm -hmm. what country, what what uh, language you speak, uh, and different little factoids about yourself in these little about hashtag you, blurbs. your intended audience. Yeah, you are allowed to at the moment use five of them, and mm -hmm. they are five on a on a pre made list. Uh, you can have a couple characters to make a custom one which is highly vetted to make sure that people can't, you know, the internet. Yeah, um, yeah. But they will be doubling your ability to have custom tags from 5 to 10. Okay, that's cool. Because um, I, also... I see a lot of streamers that, like, all their tags are used up for um, identity, LG, uh, LGBT and so forth, um, and then not as much being able to be used for targeting the stream outside of that. Yeah. So I'm I'm I pr very proudly rock my uh, my ally hashtag first and foremost um, on things, um, but yeah I'm really looking forward to that because it'll mean that there's more avenues for people to be able to stumble upon your stream or in the case of like many of us do when you end the stream raid somebody mm -hmm. um, because you never know if you could build a, a relationship you're building up other people and you're also helping other smaller streamers get. Uh, uh, numbers up and things like that. They are also uh, uh, increasing the allotted text amount for the custom tags. They are already well ahead of that and uh, banning so many terms and so many yep. other things and so yep. many languages and things. Yep, yep. Um, they they wanted to make sure to emphasize that part. But they did add a new feature and a new segment called Guest Star. The specifics of it are yet to be released because they're still working on it. But what it basically is, is instead of us here having to open up Skype yep. to add another guest and things like yep. that, we can just literally pull another live Twitch channel to be featured on our channel Yeah. Um, with us in that moment. Uh, the thing I kind of like about it is it, it tells you that if you do guest star... Uh, you are able to control, so our producer here would be able to control their audio and video and yeah. things like that before they get here and on the stream to chess to make sure that people don't come in and this is how they sound. Yeah, recording. so like, like basically that. it doesn't work that like basically if we were to have say Rafe Wolf on here, she would be streaming on her own, but then we would pull what she streams out to accompany ours? Uh, it would basically just be like hosting. Okay. Um, where it would then just snap her stuff live to us. Nice. Um, but yeah. connecting through Twitch's servers, not uh, instead of OBS having to go or Skype or yeah, a third-party yeah. Discord, all these other things. Um, and and a neat thing is that like, uh, let's say that uh, we bring someone on that has a user ban list. Um, that is very like, all right, you know, there's some toxic people that try to watch me and that are banned, whatever. We would have access to that list and we could make sure that while that person is guest starring on our channel, that that ban list is in effect on our channel too. Um, any sort of moderation as far as uh, banned terms and stuff like that would be able to be used. Um, so that kind of like shared experience there uh, with moderation is something that is honestly refreshing that they thought that far ahead because <laughs> usually they don't. 
No, they're usually they usually very innocently try to trottle out new features, and they're like, <gasps> "What are you doing with that?" Like, yeah, and and given ten seconds, everyone's like, "Well, here's why that's a bad idea." And so far, I haven't heard anything like that with this stuff. We'll see. I think it's because it's not t- on Twitch's end. It's literally, hey, streamer, you're going to be able to do these True. things. Your moderators are going to be able to control these things. But it's on and, you. And to- if you don't like their implementation, you can still do it the old fashioned way. But like instead of us, I, again, Taco Pills like, oh, someone uses Skype. Well, I mean, we do because uh, Xbox makes Skype really easy. Instead of worrying about that and having a guest on here, when that guest comes in for guest star, again, they have a list of banned uh, viewers that we want to make sure we're, we've got a safe place for them to be on our channel, and we that will then also yeah. ban here, and so forth. So I'm liking I'm liking this stuff. So very much looking forward to seeing how that goes with Twitch and things like that. One more clerical note that you'll notice: channels uh, who are affiliate level or or higher uh, will occasionally check the bar down below the video. There's a give feedback button. Uh, and they are they are taking these things. A lot of it is positive uh, 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 cr- uh, 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 statements. You know, I watch your channel because I like your bop it bop it bop it bop it bop. And it's like a drag down list. But do those. It helps a lot with content creation and things like that. Um, and helps us, you know, folks to figure out what am I doing that you're tuning in for, and what am I not doing that you're not tuning in for. Yeah. Like, and stuff like that. But for people that have banned, uh, have to do this uh, just because of wrestling. You just made the list! Um, yep. Awesome. Well, that is going to do it for the Nerd Glasses podcast tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you, Dudicarus, Akai, Taco Pill. Oh, gosh, going back through. Demon Dragon. Um, oh, who is our new follower today? Vladimir Spider. Thank you so much. Love Alec um, for lurking. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, everybody, dropping in tonight. Thank you for the new follow. Thank you for thank you for enjoying what we do. We are here every Tuesday night at 7:45 Eastern, bringing you the latest in news that is interesting to us. And if you want to be able to contribute some news that is interesting to you, go to the Discord down below where you can hang out in our channels. You can also see table topics if there's stuff that we don't get the chance to bring up on the show uh, that we've got right there. Um, Coming up next is going to be The Citadel, which will be me. I normally play games that have gotten a mixed response. They're not awesome. They're not awful. They're somewhere in between. I'm going to be playing Split Second. I think it's going to be a good time. So drop in for that. I hope to see you there. And, of course, follow for all the other awesome streamers and programs that we've got on the network. Uh, In the meantime, until we get to see you uh, next Tuesday, I've been Boater. I've been Dave, man. And we'll see you then. Thank you all, and have a great night. Unless you're joining me on the Citadel, in which case, I still hope you have a great night, but with me. Okay, bye!